Welcome to our video on area with polar coordinates. The goal of this video is to determine the area of a region bounded by a polar curve. Before we take a look at this from a calculus perspective, I'd like to take a look at the area of a circular sector, which you should be familiar with from trigonometry. So if we want to find the area of this circular sector here in green, we can use the formula area equals one half r squared theta, where r is the radius of the circular sector, and theta would be the angle in radians. So for example, on this problem, we can tell the radius is equal to three, and the angle theta would be 60 degrees, or pi over three radians. Therefore, the area of this circular sector is equal to one half times three squared times pi over three. And we can see here a factor of three simplifies out, so this area is equal to three pi over two square units. Now the reason this is so important is this is the idea that we're going to use to develop the area bounded by a polar curve. What I mean by that is the area is going to be equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of one half times the summation of f of theta squared times delta theta. So what we're going to be doing is finding the area of circular sectors with very small angles and then summing the area of the sectors. And then as the number of sectors approaches infinity, the area of the circular sectors will approach the area bounded by the polar curve. To develop this idea, let's go ahead and take a look at an animation. So here's a rose with four petals, and watch what happens as we increase theta and as we start to sum the area of those circular sectors. You can see it starts to accumulate the area bounded by the polar curve from the area of those circular sectors. And again, the whole idea is as the number of circular sectors approaches infinity, this area will approach the area bounded by the polar curve. Let's take a look at another one. Here we have a rose with three petals. And I also want you to notice that there is symmetry here, so if we want to find the area bounded by this entire polar curve, we could find the area of one petal, as we see here, and then just multiply it by three. Now we have the complete area bounded by that polar curve. Here's another just to develop the idea. Let's take a look at one more. Notice this one has an inner loop. Okay, let's go back to our presentation. So this is pretty much the same idea that we developed to find the area under a curve using rectangles, but now we're using circular sectors. So this area is equal to one half times the def integral from alpha to beta of r squared d theta. And r squared is the same as, and r is the same as f of theta, so it can be written either way. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Here we want to determine the area of the region bounded by r equals two sine three theta. Here's the graph of that polar equation. It's also going to help us to determine alpha and beta, or our limits of integration, if we graph r equals two sine three theta on the coordinate plane, where the y-axis would be r, and the x-axis would be, and the x-axis would be r theta. So this would have amplitude two and the period would be two pi divided by three, or two thirds pi, as we see here. So I think what we'll do here is set up the def integral that would find the area of one petal, and then we'll multiply this by three. So let's see if we can do that. The area is going to equal three times one half times the def integral from alpha to beta, and let's take a look at how we're going to determine alpha and beta. And this is why this graph here becomes very helpful. Notice when theta is equal to zero, the radius is zero, so we're at the pole. And then as we increase theta, r reaches a maximum of two at pi over six, which would be this point right here. And then r decreases back to zero right at pi over three. So when theta is between zero and pi over three, starts at zero, increases to two, 
and then decreases back to zero, forming this green petal. So our limits of integration will be from zero to pi over three. We'll take a look at this on the graphing calculator in a moment as well. And then we'll have r squared d theta. Well, r is two sine three theta. d theta. So let's verify these limits of integration using our graphing calculator because sometimes determining alpha and beta can be a little tricky. Let's first make sure we're in polar mode. So make sure your calculator is highlighted here on POL. If it's not, you can just scroll down there, make sure that it's blinking over the polar mode, and then press enter. And we're also going to do this in degree mode because sometimes it's hard to determine the angle and radians on this calculator. Let's go ahead and type in our equation. So we'll press y equals, type in two sine three theta, Theta is the variable key. Now before we graph this, let's go ahead and press our window key. And notice theta goes from zero to 360, that's because we're in degree mode, and I set theta step to 1.5. Let's go ahead and press zoom five for z square. This gives us a nice graph of that polar equation. And now if we press the trace key, we can see exactly what portion of the graph is traced as theta starts to increase. So right now theta is equal to zero. You can see as it increases it's tracing out this piece of the leaf. And we can see as it goes back to the pole, theta is equal to 60 degrees, which is pi over three radians. So this verifies our limits of integration. Let's go ahead and go back and determine what this area would be. So we'd have three halves. This is going to be four sine squared three theta. D theta. We will have to apply the power reducing formula here for sine squared three theta using sine squared x equals one minus cosine two x divided by two. Notice we have to double the angle, so it'll be six theta. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. This four and this two here will simplify to two. And we multiply the two by the three halves, that's gonna give us three. And we'll have one minus cosine six theta. Well, the antiderivative of one with respect to theta will be theta. When we integrate cosine six theta, we are going to have to perform u substitution where u is equal to six theta, du is equal to six d theta. So we're going to have an extra factor of one sixth here. We'll have one sixth sine six theta. Let's go ahead and evaluate this now. When theta is equal to pi over three, we'll have pi over three minus, this will be the sine of two theta, which is equal to zero. And then when theta is zero, these are both zero. So this def integral is equal to pi, which tells us the area bounded by this polar curve is equal to pi square units. Remember, we did multiply this initial integral by three, so this is the total area of all three petals, not just one. That'll do it for part one of area using polar equations. We'll take a look at some additional examples in the next part.